My name is Brian Kassler. I served four years with 2nd Battalion, 6th Marines, Fox Company, or an infantry unit. Um, what I want to talk about is some of the smaller things that occurred very frequently throughout my three combat tours. These are the things that I left out to the letters home, and I rarely mention because it's not something I'm proud of. Whether I participated or I witnessed it, I never stopped it. When I first arrived at the fleet after completing infantry training, I checked into my unit and we had our first company formation. This is something that I didn't think about until I had made friends with a few people in the unit, but our first platoon was a segregated platoon and nearly 90% of all minorities in the company had been moved to first platoon where white leaders were put in charge of those minorities as squad leaders and platoon sergeant. The, the real separation here is, is more than race. It's, it's the dehumanization of individuals through devaluation of their worth. And in the Marine Corps, as an infantry unit, you separate yourself from everybody else by thinking of all other Marines as pogues, which are people other than grunts, and then yourself as infantry and somehow you have more value than those other people. And this carries on to later stories. Just some common things that um, you'll face in your daily non-combat environment is uh, if you're in an office and it's the morning and you're walking by maybe one of your staff sergeants and you say, good morning, staff sergeant. Well, I guess the, the common response in the civilian world would be like, oh, good morning to you too. But in the Marine Corps, you get, er, kill babies. And that's motivating. That's not meant to be funny or that's meant to motivate you and, you know, start off your day with, er, kill babies. And this isn't something that just happens once. It, the Marine Corps is filled with one-upsmanship to say the most dehumanizing, the most racist, the most offensive thing and to enjoy it while you're doing it. During my first deployment, I was deployed to Kuwait in support of the invasion of Iraq. This was in 2003. Our unit was responsible for guarding General Tommy Franks. While staged in Kuwait, uh, we received um, alerts for incoming missiles or possible gas attacks. Well, as a Marine, being with the general, you feel like you're going to get the most current information and you're going to be protected uh, because you're going to be just up to date and around these other important people. Well, it was very disheartening to see the generals, uh, Marines running out of their tents, putting on their gas mask. And then I look over to our commanders and I say, well, should we put on our gas mask? They say, well, wait, the uh, gas siren hasn't been sounded yet. And several minutes later, maybe five, ten minutes, they would come running back out because they had forgotten to sound the siren for the rest of the base. So as Marines, we knew our place. We were at the bottom of the food chain. We were the ones that get forgotten about. Some of the other smaller things, uh, once the invasion kicked off, we started uh, crossing the border and moving into Iraq. And my experiences were mostly uh, a positive reception by the Iraqi people. We were mostly vehicle mounted and pushing forward. And when we weren't vehicle mounted, we were in uh, obscure bases that only uh, a small amount of nomads would come by and interact with us. But while on these convoys, I saw Marines defecate into MRE bags and throw them at children on the side of the road, urinate into bottles, throw them at children on the side of the road, while stopped, take out their MRE bag, remove the chemical packaging that is activated by water, activated by moisture. This is what Marines use, all service members with MREs use to heat their MREs as a moisture activated chemical heater. They would remove the chemical heater from the warning package that said do not eat with a symbol of a person and a X sign through them saying, you know, do not eat this. And they would give that to Iraqi children to see the responses on their faces. Eventually, our last 
Our last point of settling uh, during the invasion was in Babylon. While there, I saw the destruction of the Babylonian ruins. I saw people take away chunks of it to bring it home. I saw the complete lack of understanding and just disrespect for the ruins with people driving Humvees up, up slanted walls so they could drive the Humvees extremely fast down the walls to get a little joyride while nobody was around.